Death closes all doors, unless you're a Dragon Age character. In this video, we're going to take a look at six Dragon Age characters who come back from the dead. Keep watching to see it all. What's up everyone, Big Dan here. I make videos about RPGs like Mass Effect and Dragon Age. I explore hidden scenes, rare choices, lore videos, and guides. So if you want to see more RPG content, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Number 1. Liliana In Dragon Age Origins, if you poison the urn of sacred ashes with dragon's blood, then Liliana will take issue with this. Assuming she wasn't hardened during her personal quest, our favorite Chantry sister will try to kill the Warden, forcing us to put her in the ground. But despite disintegrating into a pile of bones before our very eyes, Liliana doesn't actually die during this encounter. She will return in both Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition, and in both games we'll have an opportunity to ask her about her so-called demise. Sister Liliana, from Lothering. But I heard you died. The Maker knew it was not my time. There is more for me to do in this world. In Dragon Age Inquisition, Liliana will recall how the Grey Warden killed her in the Temple of Sacred Ashes, not far from where this conversation takes place in Haven. I used to believe I was chosen, just as some say you are. Once, I was sure I died. I did die. Who else but the Maker could have resurrected me? But if he didn't save me to help the Divine, then why? Why am I still alive? Wait, you died? It was right there, at the temple by the urn of sacred ashes. We found the urn, proved the legends were true, but the hero of Ferelden corrupted them. And all I wanted at that moment was vengeance. It was a fight I couldn't win. But I didn't care. And the hero struck me down. I awoke later in agony. The ashes were gone. I can't explain how I survived. You can't have been raised from the dead. That's absolutely... just... no. Believe what you want. I'm still here. But is this truly Liliana? The end slides in the Trespasser DLC suggest that perhaps our favorite Spymaster was actually a spirit. If Liliana died in Origins and she doesn't become the new Divine in Trespasser, her end slide mentions that she disappeared from Skyhold one day, leaving behind a note that reads, The Lyrium sang thought into being. Now time is stale and the melody is called elsewhere. Until I am needed, I am free. All I can say is, what the f***? Number 2. Ogryn the Drunken Dwarf is another companion which the Grey Warden can provoke into a violent confrontation. If your disposition with Ogryn is negative 100 and you select an insulting dialogue option, then he will try to kill you in the party camp. Oh, you've a real mouth on you, huh? Lift your weapon, Warden, and pray for a painless death! <laughs> I always find it hilarious that he says, you've got a real mouth on you, considering the player character is a silent protagonist. But anyway, even if you kill Ogryn in Origins, he will come back in the Awakening DLC, and you can ask about why he's still alive. What? That's no way to greet an old friend. Aren't I dead indeed? Hey, wait a minute. A few months ago, I woke up with a splitting headache without a shred of clothing to cover my glory. Couldn't remember a thing. Thought, hey, it must be Tuesday. <laughs> but it was you. You tried to kill me. <laughs> nice try. Didn't stick. Came here thinking I might try my hand at becoming a bona fide Grey Warden. I guess folks from Orzammar are just built different. Or maybe it's the booze that saved him. Number 3. Flemeth In Dragon Age Origins, you can recover Flemeth's grimoire from the Circle Tower and give it to Morrigan for closer inspection. She discovers that Flemeth planned to kill her and take over her body, like a Ferelden invasion of the Body Snatchers type scenario. Morrigan asks you to confront and kill Flemeth for her, and you can choose to go along with this plan if you wish. 
But even if you do, Flemeth's survival is retconned into the opening of Dragon Age 2. She takes the form of a dragon and swoops down to save Hawk's family outside Lothering. In exchange, Hawk transports an amulet containing part of Flemeth's being and delivers it to an altar on Sundermount near the Dalish elf encampment. This initial encounter with Hawk would have occurred before the Warden killed Flemeth in Dragon Age Origins, so it's a way of keeping her alive. I'm a little more accepting of Flemeth's return, considering she is actually an elven goddess, so her survival is a little more believable than, say, Ogren's, who was just so drunk he couldn't die. Number 4. Anders Our snarky, cat-loving, radical mage companion makes his first appearance in Dragon Age Origins Awakening expansion, potentially joining the Grey Wardens at Vigil's Keep. Anders can possibly die during the DLC if a few conditions are met. If Anders is left to defend Vigil's Keep from the Mother's Darkspawn army, plus the Keep's defenses have not been upgraded, and the Warden Commander chooses to save Amaranthine instead of the Keep, then Anders' death will be mentioned in the end slides after the Mother has been defeated. But this doesn't matter because he'll return in Dragon Age 2 regardless, even if he technically died in this scenario in Awakening. If Nathaniel Howe survived the events of Awakening, and you bring Anders along for his quest in Dragon Age 2, Howe will be surprised to see that the mage is still alive. And... Anders! Making friends as always, I see. Y you died. I saw the body, the arrow in the neck. Perfect. If you come across any Templars or, uh, Grey Wardens who might want me back, tell them exactly that. And is, is there something you're not telling me about being dead? When Vigil's Keep fell to the Darkspawn, I left. Unheroic, I know. But your body... Let me guess. Badly burned, in robes. Do all mages look the same to you? I can see this is an argument I will not win. I'm somewhat willing to let this one slide. He was killed off in the credits, after all, which felt like kind of a cheap death. You have to take the end slides from Dragon Age Origins and Awakening with a grain of salt anyhow, since so many details get retconned or ignored in the future, as we'll see in another example later in this video. In my opinion, Anders' return is more believable than Ogren or Liliana, even more so because we never actually see him die on screen. Before I move on to the final two totally not dead characters, here are a couple of honorable mentions from Dragon Age 2. Zevran will potentially return for the Murder of the Crows quest in DA2, even if you killed him in Dragon Age Origins. This was unintentional, however. The quest will sometimes pop up if a common bug occurs when importing your Origins save file into Dragon Age 2. In my most recent playthrough, I imported a save where Zevran died in Origins, but his quest did not appear during my playthrough, so it won't always occur. That being said, I'm unsure whether his War Table quests will still appear in Dragon Age Inquisition even if he died in Origins. I haven't proceeded far enough in the game with a dead Zevran world state to find out, so I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Isolde is another Dragon Age Origins character who can make an appearance in Dragon Age 2. She will not show up if she was sacrificed in the blood magic ritual, but she will potentially appear even if Connor died. This is strange because according to the end slides, her and Eamon had another child and Isolde died in childbirth, so she shouldn't be alive to pester Tegan in Mark of the Assassin. But considering Isolde is excluded from the DLC if she died during the blood magic ritual in Origins, then this is most likely an oversight. Bioware basically ignores all of the end slides for Origins anyway, so at this point, who even cares? Number 5. Samson. Incoming call for Samson Simpson. Samson, it's Sheila, mama fell. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> I had to throw a half-baked reference in there. So yeah, Samson is a washed-out Templar that you will meet in Dragon Age 2. In Act 3 of the game, he will participate in a plot to overthrow Knight Commander Meredith. You'll run into him during the quest, Best Served Cold, and Hawk has the option to recommend the Templars execute Samson at the end of the quest. Is there any recommendation you would have me bring to Meredith, champion? They used illegal magic in a plot against the Order. I say execute them. I can see why the Knight Commander thinks so highly of you. Take Samson too, men. 
If he knew so much about this plan, he must have been part of it. No! Please! Regardless of your decision, Samson will return in Dragon Age Inquisition, potentially becoming one of Corypheus' top lieutenants if you recruit the mages to join the Inquisition. I can't remember if Samson is still around if you recruit the Templars, but he plays a prominent role in the Dragon Age short story called Paper and Steel, so his survival is canon. As far as I know, there is no dialogue in Inquisition acknowledging Samson's death in Dragon Age 2. In fact, Samson's fate is not even included as one of the decisions you can alter in Dragon Age Keep, so there's no way the game would even know that you killed him in DA2. Now there is some wiggle room in Samson's story here, since you never actually see him executed on screen but Cullen's dialogue at the end of Best Serve Cold suggests that Meredith already killed him by the time you returned to Kirkwall to inform her about the conspiracy. What is the Knight Commander doing about the conspirators? Did you not see them as you came in? The Knight Commander will ensure no one follows their example. Number 6. Corypheus Many of you probably know Corypheus as the lame-ass main villain of Dragon Age Inquisition but his first appearance in the series actually occurs in Dragon Age 2's Legacy DLC. During this campaign, Hawk and crew get trapped in an ancient Grey Warden prison, and the only way to escape is to weaken the magical seals that are holding an ancient Tevinter Magister. This Magister turns out to be the darkspawn addled Corypheus, who awakens from his slumber only to be killed by Hawk and crew within moments of revival. And this wasn't some kind of situation where they incapacitated him and he was left for dead, only to come back alive much later on. Corypheus was straight up fully dead. The dialogue with Varric and Hawk in Dragon Age Inquisition completely acknowledges this. Varric said that you fought Corypheus before. Fought and killed. If you and Hawk defeated him once, we can do it again. We didn't just think Corypheus was dead. He was dead. No pulse, no breath, full of stab wounds. There wasn't a lot of room for doubt. It's baffling to me that Bioware brought this guy back for Dragon Age Inquisition. If you're planning to use a villain in an upcoming game, why the hell would you introduce him and kill him off in a DLC? It doesn't make any sense. But I guess it doesn't matter because it's practically a Dragon Age tradition at this point to bring back characters willy-nilly. Compare this with Bioware's other main franchise, Mass Effect, where at least two dozen companions and NPC characters can be killed off and none of them come back. Well, with one major exception, but that was the Lazarus Project, and it was a big deal for Shepard to come back from the dead. In Dragon Age, practically everyone and their mother gets a Lazarus Project. Half the time, there isn't even a plausible explanation for the character coming back, other than the writers wanted to use them again. I love Dragon Age, but this shit is kinda whack. So there you have it. Six different Dragon Age characters who rise from the grave. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and Dragon Age videos. Also, shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.